All right, good morning, guys. We're gonna be looking at our very first video lesson today over points, lines, and planes, some of our basic undefined terms that we're gonna be using here in geometry. So let's jump right to it. All right, so when we look at points, lines, and planes, there's a couple of terms we need to remember here. And you're gonna see these words a lot. So the first one being is a word called postulate. All right, so specifically a postulate is a statement that is assumed to be true without proof. If I was to tell you the sun is hot, that's a postulate, okay? We know it's hot. We're not gonna go up to the sun and test its temperature, but we do know it is hot. Another term that we have is called a theorem. A theorem is a statement that has been proven true by using either postulates, definitions, or other facts that we know about uh, the situation. So some of the things you're gonna be looking at today are considered postulates. Some of the things that we'll be looking at other days are will be considered theorems. So let's jump into our first couple of terms here. So the first one we're looking at is a point. So specifically, what is a point? Well, it's hard to really give a definition of a point because again, this is considered an undefined term. What we have for a point are more of descriptions. So let's jump into some of those descriptions first. So let me zoom in here. All right, so one fact that we know about a point is that it specifically has no real size or shape to it. Some places draw a shape as maybe a box, other places draw it in as a closed circle, so it doesn't really specifically have a designated shape. The other thing that it does have when we talk about points is location. When you use your Google Maps and you get that little dot there, that's a location. So that's why it's shaped like a little point, a little dot there. So when we get ready to draw these, we're gonna be using just a closed in circle for that. And in a little while, we'll talk about how to name it. Now, when we talk, when we have pictures of points, they do have to have capital letters with them, okay? Capital print letters. Some of us know cursive, and we actually do use cursive letters in geometry when we name things. So just as a reminder, when we draw a dot, when we draw a point, they can be drawn as just a single dot, maybe a spot on a map, Okay. Sometimes even maybe the period at the end of a sentence, the colon that's there in those words is actually two points put together. And again, it is named by a capital letter. In this case, it was an A, but again, just any capital letter will work. And we could read it either as just the capital A by itself, still read as point A, or we can actually write out the word point followed by its letter, okay? So that's what we know about points. Our second undefined term that we're gonna look at is the line. So the first thing we're gonna look at are the facts. What do we know are true about lines? All right, so one thing we know about a line is it is made up of lots of points. It actually has an infinite many number of points on it. Another fact that we know is that it has no real thickness. It's really just gonna depend on how sharp is your pen or pencil that you're gonna be writing with. It has no width to it really. But what it does have is direction. Especially in Algebra 1, that direction is what helps you actually figure out your slope. Is your slope positive, negative, zero, or undefined? So that's one of the things that helps us with lines is that we know it's gotta have direction. So now we go into how is it drawn? Well, we need at least two points to draw a line. There could easily be more than that, 
But again, two points, that second point helps me figure out what direction is the line going. Now, since we, it does have points on it, those two points need their names. And we're gonna talk about um, another way that we could possibly name this here in just a second. Sometimes we could look for a small cursive letter out by the uh, arrow at one of those ends. So now let's talk about how it's uh, specifically drawn. All right, so when we draw lines, what we really need is, it is specifically like a bar, but it does have arrows on each end. In geometry, those arrows have to be there. Otherwise, we're talking about a completely separate object. So it is very important to make sure we have those arrows. All right, now, how do we name a line? Lines specifically can be named in two different ways. We can use the points. So if we use the two points, in this case, we had A and B, we just have to draw a teeny tiny little line on top of those two letters. Now, the beauty of using the points and the beauty of a line, because the ends of this figure are exactly the same, there's an arrow at each end, you can actually reverse the order of those letters and you're still talking about the same object. So while I may call it line AB, you may call it line BA, and we're still talking about the exact same object. It's kind of like something has a nickname. You're still talking about the same thing. Now, the other way that we can use it is use what's at the arrow. In this case, if there is a letter out by the arrow, we're looking at a lowercase cursive letter. So in this case, that is the lowercase m that's down there. So this is again, just as a reminder, lowercase cursive letter. Okay, hence why it's got the extra little curve in there. So when we actually name these, again, we've got them there. You can use your line AB, you could call it line BA, or you can in fact just use the word line and the cursive letter out by an arrow. So now let's look at our last undefined term, which is the plane. So a plane more specifically is a flat surface. Okay, and it also extends infinitely. Now I know you've heard this word in algebra one and two, because it's, it's very similar to infinity. Infinity means it keeps going. Same thing here, if something extends infinitely, then that surface in this case is extending infinitely in all directions. Okay, so let's talk about now how it's drawn. So when it's drawn, since it is a flat surface that extends in all directions, it's kind of hard to draw a surface that continues. But one way we can draw an example of it is to draw in just a closed off area. We'll give it some points on here. And since I am giving it points, I wanna make sure those points have names. And also we'll have a, another way to name this, a cursive letter, only this time that cursive letter is capital. And I'm actually gonna use a different letter since I've got B there. Okay, we'll use a capital G here. And again, it is cursive. All right, so now we'll talk about how do we name this? Okay, how is it gonna be drawn? So the same way I kind of drew that picture there for you, it's drawn as a closed in area
Okay, it's drawn as a closed in area. So that way you can actually see where that surface might be. And again, it's just an example. So let's look at now, which one's next? We've got named by. So what is it gonna be named as? What do we need to name this? Well, specifically to name a plane, we need at least three points. But they have to be on the surface. We'll see an example in a minute where there's a point not on the surface, so then I can't use it to name it. The other way that we could possibly name this is with a capital cursive letter. And this capital cursive letter is usually going to be in a corner. How do you know that it's not a point? Well, if there's not any dots near that capital letter, that's your clue if you, if you can't tell if it's cursive or not, okay? Are there any dots around it? So now if we were to name this with our words, okay, the three points that I had on my plane was an A, B, and a C. So then I could say plane A, B, C, plane A, B, C, and you just list the points. Now, one thing to be careful of, one thing to remember here, when you are looking at those letters, the order does not matter. Just like with the line, I could name it two different ways and I'm still talking about the same thing. I could say plain C, A, B, and it's still the same object. Now, the other way we could name it again is to use that cursive letter. So we could call this just plain G. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of a curl there at the end so we can kind of tell that it's supposed to be cursive. All right, so there's our naming of our three first terms. So now let's jump in to some examples here. All right, so use the figures below to name the different objects that are here in the picture. All right, so for this first one, we have point A. We've got a dot with just a point. And sorry, guys, I'm going to rewrite that because it's a little big. There we go. All right, so we've got point A. Underneath that, we've got a point B. I'm sorry, point D. And then for my line, we have either line, I'll draw my little bar here, CB, or you can reverse the order and have BC. Again, same thing. It's the exact same object because again, the order does not matter of those two letters. So now let's jump to the second one and see what we've got going on here. All right, so we've got three points. So we've got point X, point Y, and point Z. And now notice we've got that entire gray surface happening. All of this gray closed in area. That's because it's representing a plane. So we could call this plane X, Y, Z because I could use my three points. And again, order of those letters does not matter. Or notice what's going on here in the corner. There is a letter over there and there's no dot anywhere near it. And notice it's kind of curly. That's our capital cursive letter. So this is plane L. And I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a curl so that we can know that it's supposed to be capital and cursive. It's not quite as curly as I wanted. We'll say plain L, okay. So again, those are just our naming of our basic terms. So now let's see how we can bring these together with some postulates. All right, so we've got some blanks here. So before we get into our postulates, let's talk a little bit about, because, about these because they have to deal with intersections. So specifically our first blank there, the intersection of figures is the set of points that the figures have in common. So we're looking at intersection. Okay, we have intersection. Now our first postulate, through any two points, there is exactly one line. Just like we talked about when we're gonna draw, I need two dots to be able to draw the line. 
Now, if two distinct lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point. So these two kind of reverse each other. So let's look at the first one. The first one says through any two points, there is a line. So I start my two points. I can connect them, make any line I want. The second one says if two lines are intersecting, then they intersect at exactly one spot, one point. And now our last one. If two distinct planes, which means two different planes, intersect, they will intersect in exactly one line. So let's see how that works. So we have the lot, the plane, let's say we have a flat one here, kind of like the floor of your house, the floor of where you live or the floor of a building. And it intersects, let's say the wall. So there's the wall in the building. So we want to figure out if these two planes are touching each other, well, what points do they have in common? So I'm going to zoom way in here. Well, they have this corner in common, and they have that corner in common, and they have all of these little spots where they meet in common. So if I have all of these points, notice they all line up. So between any two points, there is a line. So when two planes intersect, we actually do, in fact, get a line, one line to be exact. So let's see if we can use that and figure out which of the postulates they are showing us here in these three examples. So what do we have going on with A? Well, I've got two surfaces. I've got a green surface and I've got a blue surface. So they're showing me two planes. And those two planes are crossing, which means they are intersecting. So this is postulate 1-3. Let's check out the next one. Now I have two lines crossing. And they're crossing at a single point. So now we're looking at postulate, and I'm just going to abbreviate this, 1-2. Now let's check out the last one. We've got two points here. And they're on one line. So now we're looking at postulate. And again, I'm just going to abbreviate 1-1. One -one. So now using that, let's see if we can answer a couple of these questions for today. All right, so use the figures below. So these figures are going to match up to these different questions. So where does line L, so there's our first line that we're going to be looking at, and line YR intersect. So these are two lines crossing. So before I even look at my picture, if two lines are crossing or intersecting, they're doing it at a point. So that's what we're looking for. Where is the point? And that's what we need to find. So let's find those two lines. So we need line L. So here's line L, look for your symbol. That's this entire vertical line here. The other line is Y, R, so that is this flat line. So we need to locate the one point that they have in common, which happens to be point R. So those postulates are a guide to help figure out what exactly are you looking for? What kind of answer should you have? So let's check the next one. Where does line L, so there's that same line L, this time and plane, RYW intersect. So again, line and a plane, they can intersect. And it's what points do they have in common? So let's find those two items. All right, so here is line L again. It's a little bigger. Okay, now one thing I want to look at real quick. Notice B, underneath that plane, there are the dashes happening. And I'm going to make them just a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see here. There's dashes happening under there. Those dashes, guys, means that the line is underneath the plane. It's behind it, so it's not actually touching it. It's not on it. 
So think about that surface, that plane, as if it was a sheet of paper and somebody has taken a pencil and shoved it through your paper, okay? That line is not sitting on the plane, it's just crossing through it. It's going up and down while the plane is flat. So line L is going vertical while the plane is this whole entire surface. And again, the only thing they have in common point R again. So let's take a look now at our next picture and our next two questions, and then we will be able to wrap this up. All right, so now where does plane A and plane B intersect? So postulate one three said if two planes intersect, they do it at a line. So that's what we're looking for, a line. So let's see what two lines these have in common or what line these, where these touch. All right, so there's plane A going flat, plane B going vertical, and there's my intersection right in the middle. They've got all of these two dots right here in common. So then I am looking at line, we have an E and a D. So line E, D, or we can reverse it and have line D, E, same object. All right, last question. Sorry, let me erase this. Will line Y, so let's find line Y, here it is, and notice part of it is dashed, which means it's not sitting on that plane. It's cutting through it. And line ED intersect. Now line ED doesn't have anything dashed, so it's actually on plane A. <clears throat> so line ED, based on the picture, is going more front to back, while line Y is going more up and down. So in this case, they will never intersect. Will they intersect? Never. They're going two different directions. Two different directions. All right, guys, I hope you liked learning a little bit about some of our basic terms today. Please make sure you've watched the video before you check out today's assignment. And if you have any questions throughout the day, guys, make sure you check in through the, through the live Zoom, or you can send me an email, whatever you need to do to check in. But I will be online all day today. So if you have any questions, hop into your class period for Zoom, and I'll be happy to answer some. Thanks, guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.